There is lots of floaties and pine needles in this. It was so cold up there, so um, didn't want to take my hands out with a camera, but. The tree's cracking from the cold. It was, it was cold last night. Morning, 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 everybody. Back in the car. It's uh, 3.59 a.m. <laughs> and I am on the way to the uh, White Mountains. Uh, this is a last minute kind of planned hike. Not sure of all the details yet. Um, originally, I thought I was gonna have to plow today. I plowed during the winter um, for a friend. And oh, let's get by this truck here. And so, uh, we were supposed to get a snowstorm today. It's Friday, January 18th. Uh, three, three, oh, it's 4 a.m. now. Um, and we were supposed to get a storm today and another one, a big one, on Sunday into Monday, which is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So I was going to be hike, doing a lot of hiking this weekend until these snowstorms rolled in. I was going to be hiking Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Um, Monday's probably definitely not happening might do a snowshoe uh, excursion down in New Hampshire southern New Hampshire with a friend but um, hiking probably will not happen um, because I'll be out plowing all day Sunday and what it'd be a ton, of, a ton of snow whatever getting off subject here so anyways I didn't plan on hiking today I planned on plowing in the morning and then heading out this afternoon and doing the Wildcats uh, doing an overnight up in Carter Notch. Um, uh, I had no of a campsite down down from the hut. I still may do that, the Wildcats tomorrow, but I'm not sure. Uh, but today, let's get back to today. Today I am going to meet Matt at some ski resort. I don't remember what he said it was. Uh, let's see. It was Beaver Brook Ski Area, which is basically in between get the trail the road to go up to uh, North Twin and Galehead through Galehead River Road I guess it is or something like that um, both all the roads are closed up in that area um, as you probably saw from my last video we, me and Dolores did uh, Dolores and I did uh, Galehead we did the road walk which is, turns into basically a snowmobile trail in the winter but today we're gonna leave Matt's truck at the ski resort. He's gonna get in with me. We're gonna head down to the other side of Gale River Road and head up towards Garfield. We're gonna start off together, but we're gonna end up solo. I, I'm, I have no intentions of going any further than Garfield, um, but what I'm thinking right now, I planned, I grabbed everything in the kitchen sink, so I think I'm just gonna load up my polk, drag my polk in. There's a bunch of, like, I think the U.S. Forestry runs the campsites on the sides of the, um, I missed my turn here. On this, they're on the sides of the road. So I think I'm gonna haul my polk up and leave it at one of those campsites. And then when I come down from Garfield, I'm gonna set up camp right there. I'm gonna camp out tonight. It's gonna be negative two, so it's gonna be a fun night. Um, hopefully I get back in time to collect some firewood. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do one or two things. I'm either going to head up to the Wildcats, because I know there's some people, including Matt, I think, that are doing the Wildcats tomorrow, but they're doing the Carters also, so I might just meet them up at the Wildcats and do do that ridge with them and then come down with them and use them as a car spot, or I might head to Cabot. Cabot is broken right now, um, and I also have some friends doing Cabot, so I'm going to have to flip a coin in the morning and see which one I want to do. They're probably about the same distance from where I'm going to camp. Um, so anyways... I really babbled on this one. I am going to put the camera down and put the pedal to the metal because I still have um, another almost two hour drive here. And uh, I'll see you guys on, on the, at least the road walk into Garfield. And then after that, I'll be trying to keep up with Matt the whole time. So <laughs> might be limited video on the way up. I'll get some on the way down when I'm at my leisure. So anyways, see you out on the trail.
one with her tail head picture. There you go. You just swore about Dolores, right when I'm doing a video. How the hell do you win with a picture from Gail Head? <laughs> <laughs> well, we gotta read it. What is it? Gale, Garfield Ridge, 4.8. Here we are at the intersections, 841, started around 6, so that's but almost 7 miles, <laughs> so we got another, it doesn't tell you what it is, the Garfield, oh, no, it's a campsite point too, so anyways, we're going to head up, strip our packs and head up. Those snowshoes would be fine, I think. Ah, you suck. I am done. Get, it, get in there. You hear that? I can't see. I'm in it. <laughs> Gloves on. Fucking out of here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> my hands are frozen. I'm gonna get my mittens out when we get down. Fucking egg. Woo. That was cold. Well, here we are, right below the summit. I just ran up there and got uh, got the views with the well, what there was for views um, with the GoPro. I strap it to my ribs pack, and uh, it was so cold up there. So. Um, didn't want to take my hands out with a camera, but what a difference. There's like zero wind right here. And up there, it was just freaking whipping right over and fr freezing your face because I left my pack down there, so I didn't have my goggles. But anyways, and this is like the steepest part of the trail. We hoofed it up here pretty quick. Um, you know, like I said, seven miles in a couple hours. 
Um, so anyways, right now I am thinking to head back down, because I'm going to be back down to the car by 11 o'clock, um, heading over to Zealand Road and pulling the Polk in there, finding a camp spot, maybe at the campground, Z uh, Sugarloaf 2, like before, or maybe further down and doing hail in the morning, and then if, uh, reassess the weather when I get back to civilization after doing hail and packing my stuff up, and maybe going and doing Cabot too, so I can, uh, bang, bang out those two, um, tomorrow instead of doing the Wildcats, because, uh, the Wildcats are not broken, and I don't have enough time to go up there, and I really want to uh, go up there today in camp. I really wanted to do that as a camp trip. So even though it is a day trip, I wanted to turn it into an overnighter because the hut's out there, and I figured it'd be kind of cool and fun. So anyways, that's the plan right now. But that bike plans, I have hiker ADD, so that could change 16 more times by the time I hike out of here. So seven miles of hiking and, you know, 45 minutes of driving, anything can happen. So anyways, I'm going to get back down to the intersection, and me and Matt are going to part ways. He's going to head... Um, towards Galehead and Twins, and I'm going to head back down to the car and go to the next venture. Adventure, I guess, not venture. Adventure. So, here we go. I didn't bring my butt sled, and it's the only steep. <laughs> oh, well, no butt sledding today. So we just came through this, like, maybe 30 minutes ago. It's already all blown in. Can't even see, barely see we came through here. Oh, uh, the wind whipping right... <laughs> Right through the air. <clears throat> right. So, anyways, I'm on my way back down. Matt, trooping on. Uh, he's toughing it out. He just bought um, like $800 new mountaineering boots because he he has problems with his feet getting really cold when he snowshoes and hikes in the winter. So he needed. Uh, he wanted to go to mountaineering boots, and because his foot's so big, the only ones he could find that um, came in, I think. His size is like 15 or 16 or something like that. <laughs> I'm a 10 or 11. I'm 11. Um, it was these $800 ones that you can't return once you wear. And he said that he was having a hard time. It was digging up his foot. So he was heading down to the campsite to go to the shelter and sit there and tape up whatever that is his hot spot. So, and he said his feet were starting to get a little cold. So might not work out for him. I wish him the best because my feet didn't go get cold at all today. I do have toe warmers in and I got my snowshoes just right today. Um, these um, <coughs> MSR lightning ascents, it's hit or miss sometimes. I do some hikes, they fall off nine, ten times and I do other hikes that they're on, they don't fall off at all and then I do other hikes, they don't fall off but my feet freeze because they're still on so tight. So can't seem to win with them sometimes. But anyways, I'm going to keep heading down. This trail is pretty boring. I mean, it's pretty today because of the snow and the trees. The green tunnel is a white tunnel today. But other than that, there's no views, no nothing really exciting to look at. So I probably won't film a lot. Um, it's really gradual. It's like this the whole way. So, anyways, I'll get going. Back to the car, probably about an hour and a half or so. So, here we are, back down to the trailhead. Now, during the winter, I think this is Gale, Gale River Road or something like that. I don't even know. That's pretty bad, but uh, this uh, turns into a snowmobile trail for most of it. So, got another mile and a half to back to the car. Uh, on the Garfield side, they actually plow a parking spot for 
you'd go up Garfield and if you wanted to it's only probably I think it's a mile to Galehead Trailhead so you can go up this way or you can park at where I parked where I did Galehead last week I've actually parked um, they call it five corners and they plow behind the stop sign so you can park there so it's two two parking opportunities I think it's quicker to jump the trailheads on the main road but I'd rather walk on a on a back road it's like this so and it's always packed down because they I think they groom it too so anyways we're gonna get going um, get back to the car I think the plan is we have time I kinda got talking to some people about skiing and um, and the girl was worried about a lost dog and stuff, so it's 11.15 now, so I wanted to be back to the car by 11, so I'm a little behind, so we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can uh, get hail in tonight and then do something different tomorrow. We'll see. Here we go. your place eating a sandwich enjoying some unhealthy <laughs> kettle chips which are good um, at, we're at the Zealand uh, snowmobile parking lot uh, I think the I'm going to head down Zealand Road with my poke and um, I actually gonna cheat a little bit I stopped and bought a bundle of hardwood at the store when I was buying my potato chips so I will get a fire started with that tonight. Um, but I think if I can get camp set up in time, it's only a little after 12, it's 12.18 right now. If I can get camp set up in time, I think I'm going to go hike hail right now. Um, it's only going to another, it's a mile to uh, Sugarloaf 2, and then it's another mile to the trailhead, I believe. I think it's only two miles. So... If I can get down there, that'll be one, and I think hail itself is only 2.3, so 3.3, six, seven miles, seven miles out back, out and back. But it all depends on how fast I get in there and uh, set up camp. So we'll see. If not, I'll do it in the morning. Or if I uh, get into my Jack Daniels I bought, then I might not be doing it tonight either. So anyways, we'll see. <laughs> like I said, I'm kind of winging this trip because it's the trip that wasn't supposed to happen. So I'm going to finish my sandwich, my chips, and head Okay, in. so we got the pulk set up. Going to have my uh, snowshoes stowed for at least till we get down the road. Going to head down the road, around the corner, and there's a Zealand road. Um, my black bag, I didn't wrap this in the tarp today. I probably should have, but it's a pretty short walk. Um, black bag has all my luxury items like uh, an extra sleep pad just in case. It's supposed to be negative three tonight. Um, and then in there I've got my ch camp chair, a uh, cup, a dry pair of pants, uh, my snow pants, um, and uh, a, actually a sleep pad I was going to try out if I ever tented, which I'm not tenting tonight. I'm ca hammock camping, but it was in there and I left it in there. Um, and then underneath I have my my winter overnight pack, um, which has my hammock stuff in it, my quilts, my food, and all that stuff in it. And I cheated. I said I got some hardwood at the store. Uh, I got my poles by skipoke.com. Hooked to my Osprey winter day pack. Poles, apologize for the road. Everybody sees you with a camera too. I swear they speed up and make more noise. So, um, anyways, we're going to get going and hit down the trail. And when it quiets down, maybe I'll do another video.
having deja vu. We're back at Sugarloaf 2. And it looks like someone took my idea and came in here with a pulk or something before the dusting we have now. So I've decided I'm just gonna crash here. It's now almost 1.30, so no chance of doing hail today. For some reason I was thinking hail was a mile in, and or two miles in, and this campground isn't a mile in, so um, I think I haven't, oops, I just dropped my glove in the snow. I think I have another two miles just to the trailhead, and then 2.3 up, so we're talking eight miles. And I'm not even set up yet, so I'm just going to set up, uh, maybe get a fire going, some tea, maybe my hot drinks. I've got some apple cider with uh, Jack Daniels, oh yeah, it was, what do they call it? It's uh, basically Jack Daniels, uh, no, Jim Bean's version of uh, um, I call what I call fire water, <coughs> excuse me. I have lost the name. I can't even think of what that stuff's called. I can picture the bottle. Uh, <laughs> I always call it fire water. That's all that's coming to my mind now is fire water. Um, it's cinnamon whiskey. Help me out. Help me out. It's not coming to me, so whatever. It's not important. I got Jack Daniels. I mean, Jim Bean. Can't even get that right. Jim Bean cinnamon whiskey. It's infused with Jim Bean, I guess. I don't know what that means. But anyways, it tastes good, especially with my apple cider mix. I didn't bring regular apple cider. It's some powder stuff I get at Walmart. Got to get the real sugar one, not the um, fake sugar, the no sugar added one, because it's just artificial sweeteners in there, and it sucks. Got to get the real one with sugar in it. I don't usually uh, preach for sugar, but when it comes to that apple cider, you definitely need it, and go weaker than what they tell you. So anyways, let's get in there and get set up. Set a stand out here or get cold. Fireball. <laughs> I call it fire water. It's really fireball. And it's sugary and cheap. Um, the Jim Bean one's so much better. There's a New Hampshire made one. I don't know the name of it. That It's expensive, more, a lot more expensive. It's like 18 bucks a bottle, but it is good. Um, so, And everybody's doing it now. So fireball lookout because everybody's coming after you. Cinnamon. But... So anyways, I think I got hypothermia here. I'm losing it. So why change things up when you can just stay in the same site? Nobody, everybody left my site free for me. Uh, their bathrooms last time you could get into, they're still unlocked, but they are frozen. The doors are frozen shut. The water, uh, all the water melted and free froze by the bottom of the door. I'm going to see if I can dig them out, but... I don't think so, not with the shovel I have. Um, so, it might be a, a uh, backcountry toilet here. Um, so yeah, so I just took the same site. As you can see, the picking table needs to be shoveled off again. The fire pit, shovel back out. And I had my hammock right over there last time. I put it right in the same spot. And there is a huge dead pine out in the back there that... Once I get going good, I'll uh, cut some limbs off that. I gotta kind of walk around and find some uh, something to get it going started with, though. And I'm gonna there's another bathroom over there. I'm gonna check out. Maybe we can get into that one. So might as well use the toilet seat if you can, even if it is cold. So, anyways, let's get set up.
This isn't Schmirnoff. This is Jim Bean Cinnamon Whiskey. This is gonna be good stuff. Got the hammock all set up, kinda. I guess I gotta clean the snow out from underneath it. I should have done it before. Usually I stomp it down with my snowshoes, but it's that uh, powdery snow that just, it, it's hard to stomp. So I was gonna shovel it, and then I got sidetracked and set the hammock up, so. Here we go. Got hammock gear, Cuban fiber um, tarp. My signature tarp. I'm thinking about getting a Sil nylon uh, or whatever it is um, by Warbonnet, the Superfly. This is about a hundred and I think it's like a hundred and twenty bucks. And um, this one was four hundred dollars. So I figure when I use my pole car car camp, I can use a cheaper tarp. So that's my thinking. My the snow is all frozen underneath and not very deep. So. Um, I got it kind of rigged up, but I was able to dig down in a couple of spots and stick the stakes and normally I'll cut a, um, a branch and bury it in the snow, but this, this the snow underneath here is all crusty and uh, it's not going to hold. So this one actually has the doors on it so you can close it up. <coughs> right there. Um, so anyways, we got in here we have my Econ um, Zero Degree hammock gear um, and a quilt and matching zero degree econ um, quilt these quilts are they say zero on them it's gonna be negative three tonight and um, I have taken them down below that also I have my winter sock um, this has got the vent on it and then it has the solid part and you can pull it up and you can and you cinch it tight on this end and you can adjust it so if you, if you breathe out um, unfortunately one of the problems with hammocks is condensation um, no matter what I do I seem to get condensation so the sock doesn't seem to make it any worse for me but it's gonna be nice and toasty warm in there tonight so okay so I'm gonna take a walk over to the bathroom over there and see if I can find some uh, birch to get the fire started um, and I'm, I'm actually already hungry again <laughs> because I burnt a lot of calories today so but anyways um, still snowing out and the winds coming this way so I'm definitely gonna be closing the doors on that end of that tonight um, but I could I should have like to I, I always like to pitch it so the wind hits this side but I wasn't able to do it the trees here unless I went over into the woods which I didn't want to do so anyways let's get some camp stuff done
original. Jim Bean, cinnamon. So when winter camping, you have to keep yourself busy to stay warm and amused. And Jim Bean, or any alcohol for that matter, does help keep yourself amused. But you don't want to drink too much because you don't want to be tripping over your fire pit and falling in the fire or blowing yourself up with your stove. So just enough to get the take the edge off. And of course, this is my new concoction for when it's cold. And unfortunately. It's harder to keep it warm. You need to keep it warm. Keep it hot. It's probably burning hot right now, though. Oh, no, perfect. Absolutely. The cinnamon, the hot apple cider. Oh, you should smell this. <laughs> so, I'm going to get a fire going. I'm going to bring this. I'm doing a. Um, beginner backpacking trip and I'm gonna go buy a bottle <coughs> Jeez, excuse me I'm gonna buy a bottle of that and a, a box of the you have to do the original um, do I have a sugar free one around here I'm not sure I, I probably have one somewhere but at home but it, it'll, you don't want the one that says sugar free on it you want it you want this as original um, no fat, 80 calories in this, 20 grams of sugar, <laughs> holy crap, that's why I only used, I actually only used half and that was too much, <coughs> the next one I'll just use like half of the half, but, and then, of course I'm using the coffee filter to filter the water, because you're going to get, you get floaties and you, when you melt snow for water, you get floaties no matter what you do, I've tried everything, the only thing that works is filtering, and of course I have the coffee for the morning, um, I usually make it on my fancy feast alcohol stove, but lately I've just been kind of using that stove because I get to uh, melt snow in the morning anyways for hiking. So I've just been waiting for my coffee and then of course my emergency coffee. And if you watch any of my videos, you know that I've, I've dipped into the emergency coffee. Um, it's enough to get you going. Tastes like I don't think it tastes like coffee, but that's me. Um, and a couple other things to do when camping. I get these from the hotel room. I don't actually buy hot chocolate. Um, then Red Rubus is one of my favorites. And when I'm at Cumberland Farms, and Mike, if you're watching this, I don't come to your Cumberland Farms, <laughs> but I'll grab these honey, little packets of honey, and put you know, make some co uh, tea and some honey. Sometimes I don't feel like drinking. I don't know how much I'll drink. You know, I always say, yeah, I'm going to drink when I'm camping tonight. And then I don't end up drinking too much or at all. Um, and of course, I'm, the propels are back. Looks like you got a little, got a little snow going on there. Um, the propels are back in Walmarts. Um, I don't know why they disappeared for a while. These are great for winter. These are great because when you melt snow sometimes, you um, the, the, the water tastes kind of funny. So these will cover up any flavor, weird flavor you got. Um, what else do I do? I got some other teas. I think they're in the bag. You know, that's one of the things when you camp, especially by yourself like this, um, you want to do things that are going to keep you warm. You know, I always bring oatmeal. This, this oatmeal has probably been on, I'd say it's got about 250 miles in the White Mountains on it. I haven't eaten it yet, but I always bring it because I always think I'm going to want it. Tonight, for dinner, we have my vegan, I hate that word, but my plant-based macaroni and not cheese. Um, this is I make this homemade and dehydrate it myself. Oh, see right here, sugar-free, kind of nasty. 
has aspartame in it. No wonder why I don't like it. Um, here's some Hawaiian coconut macadamia. Macadamia, I think. It's, it looks like a, uh, but I think it's an N at the end. It's, this has been on probably 400 miles <laughs> in the White Mountains. Um, I bought this because I thought it looked good. And I got a buddy who lives in Hawaii, and this is from Hawaii. And I sent him a picture of this, and he goes, Now oh, that sounds nasty. <laughs> and it, it's okay. I mean, it's not great. Um, what else we got? And cozy. Some other teas. I, I oh coffee from the hotel. Single serve that goes in that little weird one the Hamptons Hampton Inns have. Trail mix. More honey. Oh, and you can't leave home without rum. This is my backup meals. Rum, and a lot of times I eat my backup meal instead of my regular meal. Um, oh look. This is what's supposed to be in my cook pot. This is usually what I light my stoves with. Um, light my fire. This is light my fire mini. Um, I love this thing. Usually I have a, a tea that I bought at Dunkin' Donuts. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Hippocus or something. This tea when I first bought it at Dunkin' Donuts, I thought sucked. Absolutely sucked. I think I bought it when I was staying down in New York. And then I brought one with me backpacking one time in the winter. It was, I think I was doing the bonds or something and I made that up and oh my god that was the best thing I had all weekend. So it what tastes good, tastes like crap when you're at home warm is totally different than what tastes like good out in the woods sometimes. So anyways, I get back to making my fire. I'm got some I'm trying to scrounge up some kindling and uh I'll sit here and enjoy this for a little bit longer. <sighs> Between the cinnamon and the alcohol, it's like burning, warming you up before you even swallow it, burning your throat. Probably have heartburn later and not have any uh, tums. Um, the closest tums are a mile away. But maybe I'll be walking out to the car in the middle of uh, 2 o'clock in the morning for tums. Who knows? <laughs> I'll tell you, I've been called a loner, and I like to be alone sometimes, but some, sometimes when you're hanging out by yourself, winter camping, you uh, kind of hope that somebody just kind of wanders upon you. <laughs> but, um, so, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to do that beginner backpacking trip next month. Um, not backpacking, beginner winter camping. I'm going to do a bunch of them. Well, I say bunch. Oop, my stove. Hope I brought enough fuel. I usually bring my big one, and this trip I was planning on backpacking it, so I brought the very little one, thinking I could use the hut as a backup. And um, I'm out here with the hut. There is a hut out here, but it's probably another five or six miles away. So um, I'll do what I can with melting snow, and if I run out, I run out. So, anyways. What was I, I talking about before I got on a tear? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I've been called a loner, and I've been uh, accused of like to, liking to be on my own. I sometimes, you know, zone out when I'm hiking, but it does get you know, a little boring sometimes, you know. Like I said, it's a little after, quarter after three. It um, gets dark probably about 4.30-ish right now, 4.45, around there. Um, and then I'll just hang out by the fire probably, you know, try to stick it out till 7 o'clock and then go to bed. Now, I was up at 1 o'clock this morning because um, I we I left my house at quarter of 3. Well, was, the idea was to leave at 3. I woke up, figured out I hadn't done a couple of things, so I started getting everything together and um, just stayed up and then headed out the door at 3. So we start. We wanted to start hiking at 5, but we got, si we got a little behind and didn't start till 6, so... Because I was coming through North Conway right, right out a little after five. It took longer to get here than I thought. So, anyways, let's keep on doing the camp chores. Can't sit around and drink all night. You want to have some nice, nice, beautiful camp chore gloves because <laughs> you're gonna burn them. <laughs> 
Gonna lose them. <laughs> Get them dirty, cut them. So I basically did all this with are these the same company. This is a Laplander saw. I think I paid 14 bucks for this thing. This knife was like 15. Um, I don't know how you even say it. More, more can no, no. I have no idea. I'll put a link at the bottom of for these, but. Um, I think, yeah, I think between the two things here, I maybe spent 35 bucks. That's all I carry. Um, I was using a silky, uh, what was it? Oh, the pocket boy. And I broke the blade, and to replace the blade is as much to replace the saw. And then I saw this one, I'm like, well, I might as well just go with cheap, and it works just as good. I actually like this a lot. My son had this, that's why I knew to get this one. So... And I didn't film when I started this, but I cut pieces of wood, yay big, and then line the bottom so the fire's not directly on the, um, not directly on the ice, because I couldn't clear up all the ice. And then, um, it also gives it some oxygen underneath, so. I just, I got this started, I didn't use any, any fire starter except for, um, some birch bark I found, and twigs, and I just chopped up the wood. Well, uh, I think you call it batoning. I'm not a bushcrafter. I just watch some of their shows to learn how to do fires. And, um, there we go. So I'm going to go out and collect some more wood. And, uh, we keep this thing going so I can dry some of my clothes. So, I got the fire going, going good now. It wasn't, I almost put it out. Because when I moved this grate... It knocked all kinds of snow in. You got to be careful in the winter time. You don't want um, the snow really dampen the fire and um, make all the wood wet. You collect dry wood, and the next thing you know, you know your wood's soaking wet. Um, one of the advantages of staying in the campground too um, is I got my pot on there, keeping my water warm for my hot adult beverage. I actually didn't bring very, that booze looked like a lot, but it's really not that much. Um, I'm on my second drink and it's almost gone. There's probably another for another drink. Don't even have a buzz yet, so it must not be very strong or, um, I'm drinking it so slow because it's 
let's see, it's now four o'clock, so I'm gonna make supper in about an hour. I'm kinda hungry, but I'm gonna wait. So my hammock is collecting a lot of snow. It's still snowing here. I don't know if it's supposed to snow all night or not, but you can see I got some wood left. And I grabbed a big, big piece. But, I don't know, I'm going to keep it going for a couple hours and then I'm going to call it quits. Probably go to bed. Once it's dark, what is there to do? So, anyways, I have not heard anybody, because I'm not too far from the road to go to Zealand for people to go out that are heading out to the hut. Um, I figured I'd hear people going by later. Well, it's still early. It's only four. You know, if they got out of work at five, they'll probably hoof out and the, um, hoof it out to the hut at, at, after dark. Um, most people get there. I was waiting. I was with. Well, I actually wasn't with them. I met them um, on my way out, and they were supposed to have a bunch of friends come out and do the bonds, and their friends never showed up because they got lost on the way out. The only thing we could think of they did is the snowmobile trail cuts to the left, and they followed the snowmobile trail, and they actually all went back and stayed in a hotel instead of trying to find the hut. So I I don't know. I have walked in. It was daylight when Dolores and I went out there the first time, and um, you know I kind of knew where it was, anyways. So I don't know. Advantages of know you know in your territory, I guess. Territory, yeah. My New Zealand, me, mine. But anyways, there's the. See, I brought the tarp. That usually I brought that in my pole to keep the snow out of it, and also well. Uh, throw it over stuff to keep it the snow from getting on it and then usually I'll lay it underneath my hammock so I can get out um, put my feet on the ground without getting into the snow but it's uh, serving its purpose right now over there looks like my hammocks actually out on the end but it's not that's just that socks pulled over there but I probably need to move the tarp over it's got the uh, continuous ridge line which I actually hate um, one of these days, I, after bitching at it about it for a year, a year or so, I'm gonna replace it. But I just haven't got around to it. Um, I'm not crazy about it. I'm sure it works for people. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, it's supposed to be easy to adjust the 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 so it's supposed to be easy to adjust. So you take and you, like, I want to bring this this way, over this way, so I would come. <clears throat> to this side, find the knot right there, which I don't know if that's focusing or not. And you slide, you slide it like this. So, actually back a little bit. And then you come over and you pull it tight just like that. I got my my wasp over too far. It should have been up back up here, but that's covering it now, so I'll pull it that work. And then of course you gotta adjust your guidelines if you adjust this after, but it'll work. Tarps are pretty forgiving. <laughs> You know, all it's got to do is divert the snow. That's it. I mean, if you got windy out, yeah, you would want everything secured good, but not, we're not going to get any wind down in here. So, anyways, I put my phone back on. Phone. My camera back on the charger and sit by the fire. I'm try to do hail in the morning. Well, try. I'm going to do hail in the morning. Um, probably head up there in the dark. So, um,. I hear people. I hear people. Shh. Oh, where they come? Sounds like. Yeah, they must be heading out to the hut. It looked like it sounded like it was coming from over there, but I think it's echoing. Um, so I'm gonna do hail in the morning, and then if I get in, done a decent time, come back here and pack everything up. I might hit, head up and try to do. Uh, Cabot, because those got I got some friends doing Cabot. They were gonna do the loop, but only if it was broken, and I know it's not broken, so they're gonna do it out and back. So by the time they go out and do the horn and all that stuff, 
probably I would uh, be up at Cabot and then hike down with them. But who knows? We'll see. They might have canceled. I don't have internet here, so um, I have no signal on my, either one of my phones, so I have no idea. I sent my son a in-reach message. I love that in-reach. It's so good. Um, he didn't seem to care where I was. I said, did you get my message? Yeah, I know. So, I guess he's good. So, Jake, are you watching this? I love you too, buddy. <laughs> I guess you think you, I can take care of myself and you don't worry about me. So, anyways. I am going to rehydrate my macaroni and cheese, which isn't macaroni and cheese, on the stove, on the fire. So, um, nice, got some frozen, frozen ice in this. Let's clean that out. Oh, nice. Right on the leg. So what I'm going to do is find my knife because I left my other one over there. So the reason I carry this is I can start fires. Oops, that wasn't a very good one. There we go start my you know stoves everything with this but I also need this to cut this because I don't always bring that bushcraft knife so when I re when I dehydrate whoa my food I vacuum seal it but I also wrap it in parchment paper which this is awesome for starting a fire and then I put it in basically lunch bag like your mother would have when you were brown bagged it and I, and I cut it and I wrap it up see it's all in there um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it in here there's quite a bit of it I, I went overboard on my first uh, batch of this but I do love this stuff so but it barely fits and then this has all the oils in it from it. It sucks all the oil, so that's really good to help them start a fire. So, of course, we're going to filter the water because there is lots of floaties and pine needles in this. See how hot that is just from sitting on the fire? Oops, I just dropped a bunch of snow in there. So I'm going to get it almost to the top like so and then if hopefully I can find the cover because I had lost the cover and then I found the cover and I stuck it in one of these bags right here so put the cover on it and I will stick it on the fire over there back with this too put this water back in there oh and when winter camping Make sure you, I have two Nalgene's. I'm going to make sure I empty my other one because if not, it'll be frozen solid in the morning. Um, and then before I go to bed, I'll heat this up. It might be too dark to, to see, but I will boil water, fill this up. Make sure the cover's on tight, but not too tight because if you tighten it up, when it, when it um, contracts, I don't know, I'm not an engineer. Okay, so everything's hot as it cools down. Everything will shrink or contract I guess and you'll never get this cover off I've almost died of thirst um, because I couldn't get the cover off I had liquid water and finally I, I cut it open but um and this will go in my hammock to heat up all my quilts um, and then also I'll have liquid water in the morning to melt snow because you, you can want a little bit of water when you're melting the snow so you don't scorch your pot. You put a little bit of water in there and get it boiling and kind of put the snow in it. Melt the snow. And also, um, you'll ha it'll keep your feet warm too. And then if you get really, really cold at night, which I never do in my hammock, you take your hot water bottle and you put it right between your legs like that. And that your major arteries that go up through there will warm right up and warm you up. Um, believe it or not, it works. I've tried it on my wrist when I'm out hiking. My fingers are cold. I'll take a... Um, um, a hand warmer and I'll put it on my wrist and hold it there and as the blood goes out it gets warm don't ask it, I, I, it sounds like crazy talk but it works so anyways I am going to get this dinner oh that's really hot that water's kept stayed hot on there on the stove on the fire I don't want to keep a car on the stove 
So this is the Tokes Brown Black. Um, when you put these on the fire, by the way, you do get a like a black residue you want to clean off when you get home. So this is the Tokes uh, 1600. Not with a frying pan. The frying pan one sucks, Tokes. Sucks. I'm sorry. I have one at home. Anybody wants it. Actually, I think I'm going to bring it to my um, beginner winter camp thing and probably give it away because I don't like it. I'm never going to use it. Um, I might, you know, if I had another cut. It's basically the same one as this. I could use it with that, but I might just give it away. But that's kind of giving away something that you don't like to some people that you might like. I don't know if that's good. And then this is the Tokes. Uh, this one, this is the 650 light. If you ever buy a Tokes, make sure you get the light. And of course, my drink that's over there is in the Tokes 450, which is a coffee cup. The Tokes makes a double wall, and so doesn't, um, oh, what is that? What is that uh, other titanium company that makes it? Um, I can't think of what the name of it is. Um, I just do Tokes. I've had good luck with Tokes, it's cheaper. Uh, but the double wall, any double wall coffee pot might be better to keep your food, your, you know, your um, your coffee hotter and your drinks hotter. But it is weighs more too. So I just make the, the koozies out of the whatever the heck that stuff's called. You can buy this at Home Depot. My son gets it for free because he does green energy, and I just make stuff. I got scraps and scraps of it. Anybody wants any, just reach out to me. I mean, if you're local, I'll bring it hike in and you can pick it up. I got tons of it. So anyways, I'm going to get over there and put my din din on the stove. I'm st I did it again. The fire. I'm so used to doing it on the stove. So there's supper, water. I'm baking some gloves. I, want, I like to wear those hike. And I have another pair. I always hike with two pairs of uh, mittens, but I like to, uh, I like those ones. I put hand warmers in them. They're not the warmest, but um, with the hand warmers in them, they work really well. And I can slip my hand out and do my videos. And those are my camp gloves. One of them dry, and the other one's over there. And here, of course, is the Tokes 450. Sporting the hammock gear sticker. There used to be a, a GoPro sticker on there. It's pretty nasty. I think it's time to make a new one. I think this thing's a year old. The, the um, cozy or koozy, whatever you want to call it, uh, using the pulk as a workbench, <laughs> look at all the sawdust, and uh, still snowing and getting dark, so let's see if we can crank, I don't have much left to go, I have, let's see, woo, nope, so this is probably it, checking out for the night. I'm gonna try to eat, eat my dinner when it's done. Who knows? Maybe I'll get some video of me eating stuff in my face some more. Can't beat this though. It's gonna be negative three today tonight, but right now I'm just I just have a uh, light base layer, light base layer, and uh, a wet coat on. So definitely not too cold. I probably I'd say I, if I had to guess I'd say it's 20 right now. So. But I've also been moving around and drinking fluids, hot fluids. But it's quiet. Oh, I, I hear people talking again. Don't they know? They need to be quiet. Should I yell at them? Yeah, you're all out there going, Anthony's drunk off that uh, Jim Bean. I'm not. I'm just being wise. Oh, I see dogs going by. Or bears. No, I see people now. They have like two or three black dogs and two people going out. They must be heading out of the hut? I don't know what they're doing. Huh. Anyways, like I said, um, check in when my dinner is done. Wow, look at that. Perfect. Mmm. <sighs> That rehydrated absolutely perfect. <sighs> Almost as good as when I first time I made it. Look at that. Mmm. It is.
cashews and red peppers, roasted red peppers and noodle uh, elbows and what else? Garlic powder, um, onion powder, uh, nutritional yeast in here. Almost tastes like macaroni and cheese. No, not really, but closer than close as I remember. Oh, this is perfect for the day I've had. Well, I'm going to enjoy my dinner. This is the last time I'm going to probably do a video because it is getting dark. Let's see, what time is it? Almost five o'clock. Wow. Getting the days are getting longer. Oh my god, this is good. One of these days I'll do a video on how to re uh, dehydrate your food from your house. What a difference when you go backpacking. So here we are. In bed at six eighteen. And I have a string hanging on my face. Huh. Um, I'm trying to send a message to Matt. I don't know why my uh, phone's not pairing with my inReach. I got right up there. And uh, he's not doing Wildcats tomorrow. Which is fine by me because I think I'm just going to do Hail. Um, and it's supposed to start snowing around 6 or 7 tomorrow night, so I do hail, and like I said, maybe do the Cabot thing, but after that, um, I want I need to get home, get some sleep, because uh, I plow, obviously, so I'm going to be plowing for like 24 hours straight, so, which is fine with me, uh, I hiked with Matt today, and call it good, um, nice and toasty warm in here, it's supposed to get neg be negative 3 tonight, so, um, I got the, uh, down booties ready to go, just in case. Um, I've actually got some pants on and, um, base layer, which is more than I usually wear. Um, but we'll see how that works. I'm actually kind of hot. So, anyways, I'm gonna, uh, listen to some music and, uh, be bored for a bit. The joys of winter camping. So, anyways, till the morning. Morning, everybody. It's about... Oh, God, it's 4 o'clock. My alarm just went off, or I'd be, still be sleeping. I don't know why my alarm was set for 4. Yeah, let's see. But, anyways... It was windy all night, and I think it finally stopped snowing. Also, I listened to all night was snow falling off the uh, off the tarp, and uh, the, the trees cracking from the cold. It was it was cold last night, um, but I was warm enough in these quilts. I know it was supposed to be the weather had said it was going to be negative three last night, and uh, these zero degree quilts and. I was fine as long as uh, I kept everything sealed up. If I my shoulder moved and lifted the top quilt a little bit, I felt a little cold. But you know, other than that, you just you know readjusted your quilt and went back to sleep. So, anyways, I am going to get up and have some coffee. Um, I heard from Matt last night. He sent me an inReach set message. For some reason, I couldn't reply. I don't know why. It keeps on beeping, saying it didn't send. But he's just going to do the Carters. And not do the Wildcats, so I definitely that's out. I knew I really didn't know what I was going to do today, so I think I'm just going to go do ha hail. And uh, depending on what time I get done, what I do from there, I might just head home after hail. But, anyways, I'm going to get up as much as I hate. This is the hardest thing about winter camp, and I could stay in bed all day or all morning. It's so hard to get up in the cold. It's easy just to keep sleeping, especially because then it's still dark out. I'm not gonna get moving. Get some water boiling and uh, put those cold frozen boots on. 
Oh, here we go. Yippee! It is the best thing about winter camping. Getting these frozen things on. <laughs> but if you loosen them up really good the night before, so you loosen them all up, you can uh, usually force your slip, force your foot in it. Talk. Be coffee. <laughs> it is frozen. There we go. And it'll be very uncomfortable for a few minutes until it thaws out. And we didn't get a lot of snow, but I heard it falling off the tarp all night. But I gotta get my gators back on because the snow's deep everywhere still. But anyways, Ugh, my feet are cold. I usually put um, toe warmers in. I've got to start them up. But I'll get some going. Okay, got the pole call packed up, ready to go. I'm gonna head up to Hale and I'll come back and grab that and do a once over of the campsite, make sure it's clean and um, I didn't forget anything. Snowshoes ready to go, poles, a day pack, and gloves. So let's get going. Well, here we are, Hale Brook Trail. And it's only 2.2 up, I thought it was 2.3. So I'm saving a whole point one. Nice. So, yeah, it was probably, a, am guessing, a mile from the campsite. So, here we are. About, a, I'd say, halfway up, maybe a mile up, uh, Hale Brook Trail. And uh, I've had my televisors on for quite a while. Some guy, he must have come out here pretty early, because I think I started hiking at by 6, maybe. And he had already gone by, and he post hole all the way up this trail. I don't know how how people do it take all that effort but hail's popping out over here i actually saw it on the road um when you're coming up to the hail when you're walking up to the hail um trailhead i call it the uh the fake trailhead because you come in and you see the clearing you think it's the trailhead but it's you're almost there but not quite but if you look to the right you can see hail from there it looks big from the from the road but um it uh what was I going to say now? I just lost my train of thought. Oh, so it was too dark for me to film it, so I'm going to catch it on the way back and um, get a little view of it from down there. But um, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it through the trees, but hail's right here. Right up there. So that's where we're heading. The trail kind of loops around this way, and then you come up, up the ridge like that. So here we go. 2.2 of up, 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 up. So, just because it's short mileage in the White Mountains does not mean it's an easy trail. I am sweating. I'm sweating like crazy, and you're not supposed to sweat, but I don't have much on. Just trying to keep the snow off me, but this stuff was kind of damp from yesterday. I tried drying it out last night, my gloves and stuff, and all I did was smoke them. How else I can smell is like 
sweat, wet, smoky wood. But I'll go home and put everything in the wash and hopefully get rid of that smell. So, anyways, let's go. Push on before I freeze standing here. Look at the views today. Too bad there's no viewpoints on this mountain. So anyways, we're right below the summit, almost there, and uh, when I get up there I'm going to change. I am sweating, and then um, I'm going to climb the Carn. There's a huge rock Carn up there and see if I can get some views, because these views are awesome. There's a nice undercast today, and um, I wish I would have done Garfield today and this yesterday, but didn't know it was supposed to be clear today, and it's no wind. I don't get it. So, it must be the calm before the storm because we're going to get buried tonight and tomorrow. So, here we go. Let's finish this one up. Oh, look how sm much snow is out here. That car is as tall than I am right there. So... I don't think I'm going to stand on that and get any views. So, right over. Right over there is an unmarked or unmaintained trail called the Fire Wardens Trail. If you were going to do the twins, you would go down that way. Um, last time I was, well, not last, last time I was up here I actually went down it, but I don't think I videoed that one. The time before that, Jake and I didn't know what it was. But uh, when you used to be able to have access to a little river road, you could actually incorporate the twins with uh, inhale and the twins all from little river road. And then, of course, down there is uh, Lend a Hand. That'll take you over down towards the hut. And uh, then you can actually go up to Z Cliff and Zeeland Mountain from there and keep on going to the bonds or whatever you want to do or turn around and look back. So. That is unbelievable. So here is the wonderful, spectacular Mount Hale Summit in the winter, January. I don't even know the date, 11 ish, 12th or 15th, I don't know. But I must have signal because my phone is blowing up. So let's stand on the car and. Oops. Woohoo! No views for short people. If you're tall, you probably get some views, but I'm not tall. So, anyways, I'm gonna get situated and head back down, grab the polk, and head out. Hey, everybody! Anthony here, as you can see. No video of coming down hail or uh, grabbing my polk or hiking out because it was so cold. Um, every battery I had was telling me that it was dead. Uh, so I couldn't, I tried filming, I got the GoPro out, um, got one of the batteries into it, said it was at like 60%, and then as soon as I hit record, like 10 seconds later it starts beeping me, it says low battery, <laughs> it shuts off, it was so, it was just that cold out, so unfortunately I didn't get any video, and, and this time of the year is really tough to, to film anyways, between your hands freezing, and the, you know, the the, the equipment failing, it's just crazy. I do the best I can. Last winter I didn't film anything, and I had a bunch of people, you know, ask me where I went, what happened, and, you know, that's basically what happened. Is it just, it's just so hard to do the filming. So, doing the best I can do. Um, you know, I got a lot of vid footage from, you know, from camp and stuff, and stuff like that, me having fun, but that was it. I mean, you guys have probably seen Hale, been there, done that, you know. Um, I think this was my third or fourth time up Hale. It was kind of cool seeing that the, how buried the Carn was. I mean, that Carn is like, you know, taller than me. I've climbed up on it. Because people tell, say that you can get views from the top of it, but they must be taller people than me. And, uh, anyways, so, <clears throat> Um, this concludes this weekend, uh, weekend of, uh, 
let's call this the weekend of winging it because I had a zero plan. I want, I do want to add that the um, fuel tank that I was using, um, that was the other cluster today. Uh, I was melting water this morning, melting snow, yeah, melting water, melting snow for water, and I ran out of fuel. Yeah, I had packed up my bag to do Wildcats where there's the hut. You, I walk right by the hut where I camp, so I intended on getting all my water from the hut. So I would go by the, wa the hut to get to my campsite, camp, and then on my way up to Wildcats, I would go by the hut again, and then on the way back down the Wildcats to go back and grab my camp gear, I'd go by the hut yet again. So water wasn't an issue. It was more cooking and, you know, maybe melting a little bit of snow. So I brought my smallest uh, fuel canister. I can't remember what it, what size it is. And no, bad, 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 bad. Um, so I headed up to hail with like 30 ounces of water. Um, didn't end up eating any breakfast. Um, on my way home, I actually asked Dunkin' Donuts for a cup of hot water so I could eat some lunch, my lunch. Um, you know, I, I, in the back of my mind, I knew I was making this mistake, but I thought I could pull it off, make, make get by, but no, not even close. So definitely got to go with a bigger fuel canister for one person and the huge one for a more than multi-day. Um, I'm actually, next next time I go camping is with a bunch of people that are new to winter backpacking, so I'm going to bring my big, big one, which I've never, he's never made an appearance in a video because it's just been ordered. Um, but anyways, so, if you're new to the channel, go down below and hit subscribe. If you're one of the, the older viewers, hit that like button. Um, if you're one of the viewers that I've come to be friends with, when are you going to be in my videos again? And don't forget to share. You know, share these videos with your friends that are getting into camping and winter hiking. I'm no expert, but I do a good job of winging it, and I've survived every time. So, anyways, till next time, this is Anthony, and I'll see you guys out on the trail.